All right, uh, welcome back. So let's do uh, an upper and a lower sum of a different curve. Uh, last time it was with a upside down parabola, so now let's take uh, a square root, and we're gonna do an upper and a lower sum so you can see how they're similar and how they're also different. So we're gonna do y equals root x uh, with five sub intervals. So when it says this, five sub sub intervals they're talking about five rectangles and they have to tell you how many rectangles to use otherwise you have no idea uh, so we're gonna go from just zero to one with five rectangles so that means each rectangle is gonna have a width of 0.2 uh, or a, a fifth so each base is a fifth okay so let's do the upper sum first so when you draw in your rectangle, if you look at the size between the left and the right, you want the one that goes all the way to the top of the rectangle or the, the side that's the highest. And that would be over here on the right. If you did it on the left, there wouldn't be any height. So between the two, it's the one that hits the curve second as you go up. So on this rectangle, between the left side and the right side, the right is still higher. So the right side is generating your height, and that will be true all the way down. Okay, so each base, again, is a fifth. So I'm gonna pull that one-fifth out and then just add up the heights. So for the heights, uh, you're gonna plug in, you know, those, those certain X values into your function and just see how it comes out. So the height for, for rectangle number one is gonna be given by X equals 0.2. So plug it in and you get root 0.2 and then just keep going. So then point root 0.4 plus a root 0.6 plus a root 0.8 and then plus now you can finally plug in the last one which is one square square root of one is one and if we had calculators uh we could keep going with this and get decimals uh, but since you don't have one you just leave it like this don't bother with trying to simplify those things out um you can just leave it alone. If you wanted to simplify them, go for it, but I'm not gonna expect you to. Okay, so there is your upper sum. So now let's get the lower sum. So when you draw your rectangles, your height is gonna be the one that's shorter. So between the left side and the right side, you want the side that hits the curve first. So on, it's gonna be the left. So that first rectangle doesn't have a height. Rectangle number two, it's gonna go like that. And rectangle number three, four, and five. And each rectangle has a base of a fifth. So again, I'm gonna pull that out. And then I'm just gonna add up each height of the rectangles. So the first one, the height is zero. Second one, the height's given by when x is 0.2, so plug that in for x. And then just keep going down the line. And if you notice, between an upper and a lower sum, they're gonna share a, several of the same values, uh, but they're just gonna be kinda off from one another. So this one's shifted over a little bit to the left. So we're not gonna go all the way up to one, it's 0.8, uh, that's the last height. And then again, you can pretty much leave this alone, just you can knock the zero off. Okay, so there is your upper and your lower sum. So if we actually get to decimal, approximations for each of these, the upper sum is gonna be the bigger of the two values. And it should be, because that's the upper sum. 
So these areas are okay, but they're just approximations. They're not actually equal to the under or the area under the curve. But we could get a better approximation if we used more rectangles. But if we started cramming more and more of them in there, you know, that could be quite lengthy. Um, if we only had a certain notation that could figure out those large sums. Hmm. Oh yeah, we use that summation notation. Hey, maybe that's why it was in here. Okay, so is it possible to eventually use so many rectangles that we can get the exact area instead of an approximation? Well, the answer is actually yes. So how many rectangles would we need? So if we start cramming more and more in there, we are gonna need infinitely many. We have to smash an infinite amount of rectangles in there. So if we're gonna add up an infinite amount of rectangles, the noto notation that's gonna apply, we're gonna need a sum but then we're also gonna need a limit because the number of rectangles is gonna go off to infinity. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video here and then in the next one we're gonna find sums um, and then limits all together.